I think that's uh, well, let's go. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to a junior VC behind the scenes. On this week's episode, we're going to talk about Map My India uh, and the AJVC piece about it inside Map My India's epic drive to IPO. So, to get us started, Varun, can you tell our listeners why we decided to write about Map My India this week? Yeah. Hey. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so, I think obviously Map My India is a very interesting company and a very unique company in a, in and of itself, right? It's a company that was founded um, in 1995, which is now almost 27 years ago. Uh, it was founded by very atypical founders, a husband and wife duo, who were, I, I guess, in the middle of their life, having returned from the US at, at a time when it wasn't probably trendy and sexy to come back from the US to India to build startups. Um, and they went after a fairly unique and challenging problem, right? Um, trying to map India with all its diversity, both geographically and to topographically. Um, and, and they've done obviously a very, very successful and fine job of, of that over the last 27 years. Um, so it makes for an interesting case study, uh, which is why, uh, you know, we, we've written about it. And of course, the, the recent IPO was, you know, something everyone was talking about. So uh, you touched on it a bit, but uh, what was the problem that they were solving exactly? And why was it important at that time? Yeah, um, so, you know, I think uh, what they were solving and why they were solving, uh, you know, I think it'd be good to get, uh, to start with their backgrounds, obviously, um, and, and to talk a little bit about the founders themselves. So uh, Rashmi and, and Rakesh Verma both were, uh, they're a husband wife duo. Uh, the husband was in the US for many, many years. I think they both, funnily enough, uh, were doing their masters from the Eastern Washington University um, at the same time. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's when they probably met uh, between 78 and 79. Um, Rakesh was an MBA while Rashmi did her master of uh, science in operations research and computer science, right? Um, so it, very complementary skill sets, right? One was more on the business side, one was more on the technical technology side. Um, and, and they moved back to India after spending many years there. And I think around 1994, they were trying to figure out, uh, you know, what, what could be an interesting, unique problem to solve um, and when they came across the problem of mapping in India. And I think what they found at that point in time was that maps in India hadn't been updated since 1931, uh, which was basically the pre-colonial time, right? Um, so as you can imagine, like many things in our country at that point in time, there, there was a dire need to update it. Plus, I think the additional reality that uh, dawned on both of them was that, you know, there is going to be a technological, you know, a te technological revolution that's coming um, and location data is going to become more and more useful uh, for companies that are trying to service uh, demand, right, both online and offline. Um, and I think with that knowledge, they went about trying to solve this very, very Herculean task um, of trying to uh, map uh, our country and build a, a GIS repository. Now, GIS stands for Geographic Information System, just for everyone's sake. Um, now, why was this important? Right? Why, why, why was the problem they were trying to solve important? Number one, um, I think, I, I don't know if I met too many people know this, but India has the second largest road network globally at 6.4 million kilometers, right? Um, so obviously, we're a very vast country. Um, uh, and, and we're a very diverse country, right? The, the both geographically and topographically is very varied. Um, it's very diverse, um, and and so and and challengingly and and I mean unsurprisingly, there is no central repository that the government provides uh, on mapping or locations, right? Which makes the problem harder. Uh, and to add to all of it, they keep changing names of states, names of country, cities, names of roads. Um, and obviously, uh, you know, as we were, you know, in a post-liberalization era, the economy was growing, there was more, you know, our GDPs were expanding, uh, cities were growing, uh, there was a rural to urban migration happening, cities were expanding, um, all of which meant that mapping data was evolving and becoming more and more important. Um, secondly, I think the big, the second other big reason was that um, you know, as come as as GDP grew, demand grew. I think you know it became uh, enterprise solutions came became you know became more and more important for companies to be able to actually service that demand in a more meaningful manner, right? And hence you'll see that one of their first clients they onboarded was Coca Cola, who used Map India's data to basically figure out you know where their distributors were located, where their uh, customers were, where their retail touch points were located, where their where their bottlers were located. 
previously the way they described it was by a river on top of a hill right um, and then using map by india's data they got more specific um, similarly uh, telecom operators used uh, map by india's data to figure out you know where should uh, their their, cell, their cellular towers be located uh, based on uh, based on the topography right uh, that that map by india was able to provide so really this was the the nature of the beast and and obviously you add to that the fact that as gdp grew obviously people got more affluent um, more people came onto the internet i think um, in the mid 2000s we were adding about 5 million um, mobile phone customers a month um, and and then the whole opportunity to service them for their location needs uh, opened up and nobody at that point in time honestly nobody had the depth of uh, 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 data uh, that that map my india had from a, from a gis perspective and uh... It's an amazing story and the whole industry was sort of evolving right as they got a transition in the 2000s and and you know we saw more and more use cases for it um rajiv can you talk us through in a bit more detail the the product suite that that map my india offers and uh how people can how, you know how customers le can leverage it sure uh so like you know varun was uh explaining the origins of how their product started uh, one of the first use cases, right, once they started uh, developing their map product uh, was in transportation and navigation, right? It was an obvious use case to help people navigate every uh, part of the way, right? So the Map My India Navigator was something that they came up with in uh, the 2000s uh, that would fit into vehicles, right? And it found uh, uh, very quick adoptability with Ford General Motors and BMW licensing Map My India applications and basically taking to this touch-based navigation in their premium vehicle offerings, right? And, you know, uh, logically with India adding uh, about three and a half million passenger vehicles each year uh, and with the market uh, expanding, uh, they could capture market share quite quickly. And today, in fact, uh, if you look at a touch-based navigation system in any car, very high chance that it is one that is fitted by Map My India. So I think vehicle navigation and transportation was a very immediate use case uh, that uh, Map My India kind of developed, right? Now with increasing internet penetration in India with the growing number of mobile phones, and overall digital literacy kind of improving in India, e-commerce was the next, uh, you know, application that kind of took to maps and navigation in a very big way, right? Companies like right from grocery delivery, food delivery, uh, want to, you know, know where their workforce is, want to know where their customers are, uh, want to know how they can uh, you know, localize their digital advertising and things like that, right? So I think that market kind of exploded and the way... Map My India kind of uh, capitalized on that opportunity was by, you know, giving companies easily integratable APIs, SDKs, which could be integrated into their existing app very seamlessly and used across uh, a wide range of applications. And it's quite, and location intelligence is quite ubiquitous, right? An app, for example, that is built for a, com for a construction company to track its workforce can be easily then uh, just tweaked a little bit to be used in grocery delivery, e-commerce, and any uh, other, you know, application where it is important to know what's happening where, right? So I think uh, they could uh, expand from the automobile market to telecom uh, and e-commerce in a very big way in through the, you know, 2000s and uh, in the last 10, 15 years as well. Uh, and uh, another interesting part was, you know, the development of, uh, in addition to 2D maps, you know, development of something called real view, right? Which is, which is, which is actually a four dimensional map wherein, you know, the fourth dimension is time where users kind of get a sense of, uh, 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 you know, a digital twin rather of, 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 you know, of topographies and you get a sense of how things are changing with time. And how this is done by Map My India is that they have around 400 million geo-referenced photos and videos, right? And these are getting updated uh, in real time. So uh, this finds, you know, uh, applications in weather monitoring, in real-time traffic, and basically, you know, anything that requires real-time data of, of, of geographies. 
so yeah, so Mapma India has been able to expand its product suite very well from you know the Coca Cola days to servicing uh, new age internet companies today. I'm assuming their business model has evolved with that. Uh, mentioned a wide variety of use cases. Can you tell us a little bit about their financial performance over the last few years? Yeah. Uh, so even today, Map My India has over-indexed on the B2B and the B2B2C enterprise customers. 80% of their revenues today comes from the enterprise uh, uh, section. However, because their products are so you know, universal in nature and do not need very high fixed cost investments, and you know, uh, they're all built in India using uh, local talent, Right, this translates into extremely high profit margins for the company. So they're, you know, going by their recently published statements, uh, eighty-three percent contribution margins and thirty-five percent EBITDA in two thousand twenty-one uh, speaks of of you know of very high operating leverage the company has today. And over the last twenty-five years, the company has been able to develop these proprietary technologies and you know full stack offerings. Uh, which it has been able to monetize over longer periods of time while, when it has been, when, after it has been created or, you know, given to customers. And I think one interesting way in which MapMy India has approached its customers is that they first try to solve, you know, one particular use case. Like, for example, you go to an automotive manufacturer and you give them a system that can be, uh, you know, uh, probably just used to navigate the driver when required. And over time, they then expand the suite of offerings uh, to, let's say, parking assist systems, real-time traffic monitoring, weather information. So they expand that suite, and this leads to year-on-year -year customer retention, right? And in the form of numbers, how this translates is that, uh, you know, about 90% of their customers are, you know, carried over year-on-year, -year, and these customers are their high cash flow uh, you know, customers that, pro that you know, provide about 80% of their revenues every year. So that's been the strategy going, uh, you know, for Mapma India over the years, uh, retain customers and then, you know, kind of improve the suite of offerings so that you can gain more from that. And to put this into perspective, you know, Mapma India started about 10 years before Google Maps was launched in, in 2005. But uh, how do they compare to Google Maps, Varun? Can you share some insight on, on their accuracy, availability, um, the amount of information they have relative to Google? Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, when, when you hear Google is your competitor, I think when you hear a, a, a Google is a competitor of, of another company, you more often than not end up thinking that that other company has no chance, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Matter of time that, uh, that they're going to get killed. Uh, but I think, I think history has proven time and again that just because you compete with Google doesn't mean you can't survive. I think uh, there are ways to carve out niches and, and compete um, in the market that Google operates because the Google companies like Google want scale, right? And they want in terms of the kind of problem or the, the customers that they're trying to address, right? And I think that's played out in, in the mapping space as well. Even though Google Maps started uh, uh, 12 years after, um, I think... Um, they definitely beat Map My India when it came to the B2C side, B2C side of the world, right? Um, they used the similar techniques to gather mapping data, uh, which were satellite images, surveyors, both on, on foot as well as uh, via cars, uh, mapping out locations. But I think what they did very intelligently was make it open source as well, right? Uh, by that, I mean, they allowed customers to contribute to the data repository, right? And as a result of what, what we have today is that uh, Google Maps 2D mapping capabilities are much more superior, or, or not much, but but more superior than than Map My India's 2D mapping capabilities, right? Uh, and hence, uh, from an, from a B2C navigation perspective, you'll find that most, I mean, Google probably dominates 100% of that market or very close to that, right? Uh, what Map My India has been able to do. Um, and, and Google could do that because obviously they distributed this product for free, right? And, and they have the luxury to do that because they, they have other businesses that are massive cash cows for them. Map My India probably didn't have the luxury to be able to support uh, making this available at scale uh, in a B2C manner for free. Uh, what they did really well was corner the B2B market, 
uh, and the B two B two C market, like Ajay was saying, right? Uh, so they built, they they had very, they they built very customized solutions for their for their enterprise customers. Uh, as a result, there was very high retention. Uh, you know, they would they would work on a case by case basis and and try to address whatever needs the customer had. The other thing that played really to their advantage was the topographic data that they had that Google Maps doesn't have, right? And so again, like Rajiv pointed out, that from the very outset they they went about building three D maps versus just two D maps, right? Um, and so for telematics and other services from a location based perspective, their data became more invaluable to enterprises. Uh, the other, obviously, there are a couple of other big advantages that that one has happened more from a regulatory perspective, and the other is just the nature of the market. You know, I think people worry, enterprises especially worry about sharing their data with Google, right? Um, because they're like, oh, the, you know, there's this fear that they'll take that data and and, and uh, start competing uh, competing with them, right? Um, so I, I think if you remember some time back, Uber, which was using Google's APIs, uh, Google Maps APIs, would started building their own maps. Um, so definitely upstarts, especially that become significantly larger, try to move away from Google Maps as a solution, which is what makes Map My India solution interesting. The second thing that happened very interestingly in Feb 2021, where the government announced new geospatial regulations, uh, they basically capped the amount of information that uh, non-Indian companies could capture, right? And there was no such cap for uh, Indian companies. Now, the interesting thing to note is at that point in time, Map My India was not an Indian company because majority of it, I think the founders held about 31%, right? So the rest of it was held by foreign investors. Uh, so the Raki, so the founders actually ended up doubling their stake by buying back equity from these foreign investors to become an Indian company, right? Um, and so that they could now capture data and as a result of which they now have a very interesting partnership with ISRO. Uh, which is again all all these are I think make, methods for them to be able to differentiate themselves uh, from from a Google, especially uh, for an enterprise customer who requires much more granular or much more nuanced mapping data than simply how do I get from point A to point B. Really interesting, um, yeah. And in, in, thanks for kind of breaking that down in that comparison to Google. But their recent IPO, um, Rajiv, can you shed some light on? Why was right now the right time? I mean, the company started in '95. They appeared a few weeks ago. Yeah, uh, very interesting. Uh, so, Map My India uh, listed on I think the 9th of December on the Indian markets. It was a 5,500 crore issue, oversubscribed about 154 times. So, it was received very well in the market, right? Uh, I think the Indian IPO market last year had a lot of, uh, you know, interest from tech companies going private, sorry, so going public. And I think, uh, you know, this was a good time to, to uh, cash in on a lot of money coming into the markets and also investors kind of, uh, you know, uh, getting, warming up to these uh, new age businesses, right? Now, Map My India has been there around for 25 years, like Varun pointed out. But I think this is an opportune time for them uh, to, you know, expand their B2C suite of services as well. And I think they can very well use their IPO proceeds to do that. Uh, there are a couple of watchouts in their business model, right? Like 80% of revenues come from 18 to 25 clients uh, that, uh, you know, enterprise clients, they service over financial year 20 and 21. So I think uh, in order to expand that service offering to a more B2C base, cover more use cases, and, uh, you know, really improve their tech offerings over the years, I think there's a good time for them to use public money to do that, right? And I think Mapma India has been able to build some kind of uh, modes in the navigation space. They have a huge market, uh, market uh, share in the car market, but if they want to replicate that with new age internet companies, startups, and really scale that offering, I think the IPO is a great way to do that for them. Definitely sounds like it's the right timing. Uh, Omkar, can you walk us through the visuals for this piece? Uh, I think we have some. Yes, definitely. Really interesting visuals that we'd love to share with everyone. Yeah. So we have like four visuals in this piece, right? So I'll talk about them one by one. So this one, uh, I'll talk about the design decisions that went into it and, you know, uh, how I make these visuals basically. So this is the first visual which talks about the competitors in this space. I think Varun nicely 
told us you know how map my india differentiated itself from its competitors especially google maps and this basically captures that uh, in a simple table and if you uh, take a closer look at this table from a visual perspective you know i got rid of the row lines uh, for each column uh, if you see a single row is does not have any lines in between so that's because if you make like multiple cells for uh, each in each type of information you can don't kind of uh, associate uh, with it on the same line right so if you don't if you don't put those lines the vertical lines in between rows you can see that okay it's part of a, it's part of one one particular one block basically that's why there are no lines there so that's for this uh, particular visual uh, and here we're talking about financials rajiv covered this uh, very nicely and so here yeah, another interesting if you think if you say is that there are two different uh, tints of pink used sorry red used one is a darker one one is a lighter one and i'll talk about why we used the same tint uh, a tint of the same color here and not in the other visuals i had so here yeah, since we're talking about money it's uh, basically profit and revenue so they are it's basically money right it, that they are not two different cat of course there are two different categories inside like this different types of revenue different type of money but it's still money right so that's why i use the same tint for the same color here to talk about because it's the same thing basically i hope i'm making sense if i'm not i'll try to explain it better mm -hmm. next time please give me feedback so that was the reason i used tint here uh and yeah and here again this is these are the funding rounds of for map my dad if you see if you again look closely the tents are kind of different for each uh bar the lower the smaller bars are lighter and the uh, bigger bars are darker that's uh, that's very that's that decision was made very consciously because you know i wanted to show you know the larger has some weight to it up compared to you know the smaller values so that was about this visual and for this visual right i talked about why you know i used tints in the other one and different completely different colors in this one so this is because there are three different categories in this particular market so to differentiate and they are they are kind of related but also largely uh, different so showing them using different colors was Uh, I thought fit the narrative really well here. That's why you know the blue is transport infrastructure, logistics is yellow, and in case is you know red again. So if let's say you are looking at this visual, you can easily tell okay the blue bars have been increasing at, at this space, the yellow at this space, and pink at this space. So here, if I had instead used tints for red, uh, it would have been harder. That's why you know. Uh, I use different colors here. So yeah, that's about the visuals. Uh, over to you, Mazan. Thanks a lot, Omkar, for that overview. Uh, and and to conclude, Varun, uh, can you shed some light on the path forward for for Map My India? What does the next ten years look like? Yeah, look, um, I think I think one thing we must realize is Map My India is an important con company for the country, right? I think uh, for our, for as a country, for us to have indigenous mapping data is extremely important. right um, and i think that's why you have the geospatial laws also that came into play last year um and map my india is a clear leader from that perspective so google maps probably is a leader from a mapping perspective in, in in terms of the market but in terms of data the depth of data uh map my india is 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 definitely a clear leader um and hence is a very very important company right um and and um, hence i think you have that isro partnership um, and 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 one can expect that partnership to grow um uh, which will again benefit map my india in terms of what solutions they are able to provide to their enterprise customers um uh, the the other thing to note is that today 50% of their revenue comes from the automotive and, and logistics sector right um and um, i think the automotive sector is obviously evolving with electric cars coming in driverless vehicles coming in i think their navigation tools or their suite of products from a navigation perspective are going to become more and more critical for that sector right um, and so i think they have the opportunity to deepen their relationships with the automotives they've had very high retention with them so clearly you know i think uh, both parties appreciate the relationship um and they have the opportunity to double down um on those partnerships and 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 grow them right 
and i think like rajiv was saying through that maybe attack the b2c uh, end of the spectrum as well right because as you have more customers on their cars getting more accustomed to the ui ux's product flows that map my india has um, i think it could be a segue into them trying to uh, also uh, attack uh, try to acquire more b2c customers um the other thing obviously that i think you're seeing more and more of is is the emergence of connected devices telematics iot etc um, and as our automobiles become more more connected um, i think there'll be an opportunity for map my india to diversify its product suite um into other areas um and and grow revenue from their existing customers through through the product expansion so i think that there's an exciting road ahead um obviously it's not going to be without its challenges because you can expect google maps to do lots of um um you know continue to innovate um continue to lobby the government etc but uh, i think there are a couple of macro factors that have played in their favor um, um and i mean and obviously i think they've shown a good track record of executing well building a steady stable uh, business um, and i think one can expect them to continue doing that uh, which makes their future quite exciting Thank you everyone for tuning in to this week's episode of Ajunya VC Behind the Scenes. We'll see you again next week.